Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to our uh, Thursday Bible class. Buksan ninyo ang inyong Bible sa Luke uh, chapter 16. Luke chapter 16 verses 1 to 12. <clears throat> Sundan niyo sa inyong Bible aking babasahin. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him uh, that he had wasted his goods. Ito po yung uh, parable of the shrewd or the unfaithful uh, steward. And he called him the shrewd steward or the shrewd servant. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear of thee? How is it that I hear this of thee? Yung uh, uh, malversation of his funds or of his stewardship. Give an account of thy stewardship for thou mayest be no longer steward. So, si Sante, fired out. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord take it away from me, the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg, I am ashamed. So uh, because uh, he is no longer a steward, he is now out of work. He is contemplating uh, what he will do of his life. Verse 4, I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and uh, said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, sit down quickly, and write fifty. So, doon pa lang sa una, binigyan niya na ng 50% discount. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, uh, An eight, uh, an hundred measure of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write uh, uh, four score. So, that's uh, 20% uh, uh, discount. And the Lord re uh, commended the just the unjust steward or the shrewd servant uh, because he had done wisely hindi lang to dalawa not only to uh, debtors of his lord that he did this kind of favor we believe uh, it is substantial in number and substantial in amount of money for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light Underline that phrase, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Most of the people I heard who uh, preach about uh, this phrase are all out of context. This afternoon I will show you the true context of for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. Now verse 10 to verse 12 is our primary text. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least 
is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if, have, and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is yours? Our Heavenly Father, please uh, use me as I convey your words to your people, our Bible College students. Kayo po ang patuloy na maluwalhati at uh, kausapin niyo po kami and may this be a blessing not only uh, to our uh, school but uh, to our church as well and to all people who might uh, uh, come to uh, uh, encounter this uh, lesson in whatever way, in whatever social media platform. Uh, may you be glorified and uh, speak to us for all these things I pray in Christ's most precious name. Amen. Contextually, the parable is about unjust stewardship. From verse 1 to 9. 10 to 12 is the interpretation of the Lord Jesus Christ himself that his disciples need to know. Us, we ought to know. And that is about faithful stewardship. So the parable from verse 1 to 10 is about unjust stewardship. 10 to 12 is about faithful stewardship. In this church, we are highlighting faithful stewardship. The mentality of faithful stewardship is we recognize that God is the owner of everything. He is the owner of everything by virtue of creation, by virtue of sovereignty. He is the source of everything we or all people may ever want. Nothing will uh, uh, be ours unless it is given to us by the Lord. Financial uh, uh, integrity is important. That's why we are uh, uh, upholding and we are uh, uh, emphasizing the importance of uh, faithful stewardship in everything, in our time, talents, and treasure. By the way, in the three uh, things that I have just mentioned, people can never have equality in talents because uh, there is also a parable concerning uh, talents. There, uh, there was a person that was given five, another person given two, and another person given one. So uh, we vary in talents. First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, and uh, Ephesians chapter 4 all uh, attest to the fact that uh, we have uh, 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 differ differing gifts and uh, uh, various numbers of gifts. At least a believer has one. In treasure, we're not the same. We cannot be equal. There are rich people and there are poor people. However, all people, all believers, all disciples of Christ are equal on the stewardship of time. We all have 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. Who among you have 25 hours a day? No one. Nobody can say that I have 23 hours a day. So our primary stewardship is being tested in how we handle our time. 
our life. We need to be faithful stewards primarily of our life. That's why in uh, uh, Romans chapter 12 and uh, verse 1, the Bible says, Ganun, nag, naglolo ko yung aking ano, Bible o ayaw mag ano Romans chapter 12 and uh, verse 1 the Bible says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service in the stewardship of life it involves time we need to offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice it is a clear doctrine in the Bible that uh, we cannot serve God outside the body This body is our vehicle for us to be able to serve God. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So once you die, you are taken out of the body and that is the end of our opportunity and the privilege to serve God. That's why we are being admonished to present our bodies living sacrifice. A dead person cannot glorify God. Ecclesiastes told us, Solomon told us that there is no uh, opportunity to serve God in the grave. We need to uh, find uh, opportunity and do with all our might whatever we have while, still, uh, while we are still living. He also said that a dead lion, a, a, a living dog is better than a dead lion. Life is stewardship of life. What kind of life? The Bible says holy, a sanctified life, a clean vessel. The Lord can never use an unclean vessel. In the house, the Bible says there are vessels unto honor and vessels unto dishonor. We need to make sure that our vessel, our body, our life must be a clean vessel unto God. You will never put a clean water on an unclean vessel. Holy, acceptable unto God. Our stewardship or our service is determined not by our will or by our desire. It has been determined by God himself. Let us, uh, uh, let's make sure that our service, our offerings, or anything that we uh, uh, render to God must be accepted by Him. Acceptable unto God through our reasonable service. Still, that, fo that falls under faithful stewardship. Now, Luke chapter 16, the parable says, There was this shrewd ser servant, the unfaithful steward, who had been uh, uh, accused and found guilty of uh, malversation of his master's resources. At least, uh, uh, the treasure that has, that has been uh, uh, entrusted to him 
the Bible says in verse 2, uh, in verse 1, the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Unfaithful steward. Wasted his goods. He called up him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? The master can't believe it. Actually, in uh, I think it's in uh, Second Timothy, uh, First Timothy, First Timothy chapter two. Uh, it is required for a steward that a man be found what? Faithful. First Timothy chapter two. I think that's the Anapin yung ayon yung verse na yon uh, it is required of tama First Corinthians 4 Ah First Corinthians 4 2 All right First Corinthians 4 2 Take note of the verse Moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That's the reason why uh, the master, according to the parable, can't believe it. Because stewards are handpicked, personally handpicked by the master. They have the reputation of trustworthiness, honesty, and integrity. However, in this parable, it is evident that this steward uh, uh, had been uh, uh, found unfaithful. He was, uh, he was asked or he was required to uh, liquidate all the remaining assets of uh, his master. And uh, he is no longer uh, employed. He was uh, fired out. For thou mayest be no longer a steward. Verse 3, That unfaithful steward said unto himself, He made a contemplation. After his employment uh, uh, is done, what would he do? According to himself, he's not a farmer. He cannot do farming. And uh, uh, at least he doesn't want to be a beggar. He had this reputation uh, uh, before this uh, uh, day that uh, uh, he is a rich person, a well-to-do person. So he cannot uh, afford uh, to be a beggar. It is shameful to him. Look at verse 4. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. He is very uh, uh, intentional in what he is about to do. He wants people to return the favor that he is going to do to his master, uh, to the debtors uh, of his master that they may receive me, those who owed his master, some uh, 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 things. So he called everyone. I believe these are plenty. His Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? He said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and uh, sit down quickly and write fifty. So that's fifty percent off what he owed uh, his master. The money did not go to him directly, but the person who owed his master now has a what? Uh, a uh, sense of uh, uh, indebtedness to this uh, shrewd servant. The next one, uh, 
he gave 20% discount. To several people, he gave uh, various uh, uh, privileges. So, he made uh, many people uh, indebted to him. Now, of course, the thing that he did uh, was not uh, hidden to the master's uh, 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 knowledge. Look at verse 8. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Unjust steward, yet he was commended by his Lord for doing what is proper during uh, his time. Proper to secure his future using his master's money. Now, uh, the object here is how we are going to use the unjust mammon. Look at verse 8. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Now, that's when the phrase uh, was written, For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. In the context of what? Managing money. That's why in verse 9, uh, according to the parable, Jesus said, I say unto you, make yourselves what? Friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Make friends of what? Of money. Of material possession. That when you fail, when all things come unexpectedly or in an adverse situation, they, people, the people whom uh, have been indebted to you because you use money for their what? For their benefits. That they may receive you into what? Everlasting habitation. The unjust word is talking up only or thinking only of his what? Of his future security. But uh, the Lord is telling us, with the use of money, we can secure our everlasting habitation. Money and material possessions are all temporal. But according to this parable, we can use money and material possession to secure what? Everlasting habitation. I don't have an outline. I have here uh, on my iPad a lesson which I taught our church in 2007 or 2006. The first and the last time I thought about first fruits offering. Because there are some verses here that I just want uh, to use later on if time would permit me. The title is First Fruits, the Offering of Thanksgiving. First Fruits is in the Old Testament. We have never been commanded in the New Testament to do first fruits offerings. However, there are many types of offerings we can uh, uh, practice in uh, uh, the New Testament. Cheerful giving, generous giving, thanksgiving, 
sacrificial giving, and uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, purposeful offering, yung mga tinatawag na ano, na mga uh, dedication or commitment offerings. Okay, anyways, that, that's not my lesson. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 16. Money and material possession, according to verse 9, can be used by us to secure our everlasting habitation. There are only two things on this earth with eternal value. Money is temporal, and I said there are only two things in this world that have eternal value. If we can use our money to these two things on earth with eternal value, I do believe it is, it is like uh, uh, the application of uh, the parable in Luke chapter 16. What are those two things uh, which have uh, eternal value on earth? Number one, the word of God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. The word of God. And uh, number two, the souls of men. The souls of men are eternal. It has something to do with our what? With our uh, commission as a church, as a local church. We have been given the responsibility to preach the gospel, to secure the souls of men. Practically, uh, we can use our money to what? To print Bibles, to print gospel tracts, literary materials, uh, uh, teaching people about uh, God and uh, uh, Christian life or Christian living. And uh, another thing is if we can use money in all practical ways to evangelize the world. You can support missionaries. We can support missions, mission, mission works, local and uh, uh, abroad. We can be channels of blessings to the people who are like us doing the will of God. Now, uh, the phrase for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. The right interpretation is only concerning disposition over money. Because the children of this world cannot and will not ever be wiser than us. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We have the mind of Christ. How can that be possible? For the children of this world in every generation to be what? Wiser than us. If it deals with the wisdom of God. No, it can never be. Only on the disposition of handling money and material possession. If we can be like this unjust steward in how he uh, uh, used his master's money for his future benefit. Or bottom line, if we can use money to secure our heavenly possession or our heavenly status, then the Lord can commend us as well. That's why beginning from verse 10 to verse 11, uh, verse 12, uh, verse 13, the Lord uh, taught us about... Uh, Faithful stewardship. Look at verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is what? Underline that on your Bible. List. Faithful in the least. Is faithful also in much. He that is unjust where? 
in the least is unjust also in much. So we see the basis of our being faithful or unfaithful is always in the least. If you cannot be faithful in the least, you cannot be faithful in much. If you are unfaithful or unjust in the least, you will also be unjust in much. But if you are faithful in the least, you can also be faithful in much. If you have 10 pesos right now and you cannot give it to God sacrificially as an expression of your thankfulness to God, it's a guarantee that you can never give 100% if, if the Lord will entrust you with 100 It's absolute. The basis is in the least. That's why in this church we need to teach everyone. I don't know if uh, my instruction uh, last December was uh, heeded when I said we need to uh, teach our children to save by giving them what? Piggy bank. I told the parents to teach your children to set apart, set apart of the things they are given or they were entrusted for future use. Savings. Not only in savings, but to train our children to what? Come to worship with offerings. It is mandatory for our children's department to what? To teach our children what? Giving. That's how we are to secure the next generation to be blessed by the Lord through giving. Teach them early. Practical ways. Teach them to pray for whatever things they need. Parents should not give up, up their children anything they ask up without them up praying and working for it. Teach our children to pray for it. Even to save for the things they want. Because money is one of the commodity wherein the Lord is testing us in the area of stewardship. Students can never give up, up much when they say, I will give when I already graduated and have a decent job. If they cannot give up from what they have right now that's the that, that's the test of uh, our stewardship i started giving 20 percent at a minimum and i was yet poor that's why it's no problem for me to give a hundred percent if i could if the lord would uh, no I, I, I should say if the lord would require it of me for almost four years, I have been giving back 100% of uh, my financial support from this church. Now, I am starting with 40% because I'm paying uh, 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 a brand new car for five years.
So the basis of our faithful stewardship is where? In the least. We are judged in the least, not in much. Remember that uh, with the woman who gave uh, uh, two mites into the treasury box, Those who gave much did not uh, catch Jesus' attention, but this widow did. Because she gave her all to God. Two mites is seemingly uh, insignificant. That's the test of faithful stewardship. Look at verse 11. If therefore you have not been faithful, where? In the unrighteous mammon. That's money. That's material possession. Therefore, it's a conclusion. Because uh, uh, the parable is about uh, 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 stewardship of money. Verse 11 is a conclusion from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Therefore, if you have not been faithful, where? In the unrighteous mammon, in money, in material possession. God will not commit to your trust through riches, eternal riches. Money is a faithful servant. But it could be a lousy master. We should not love temporal riches. But rather, we need to be faithful in uh, securing our eternal riches in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 12. If you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? The first test of stewardship, faithful stewardship, is in the least. Number two, the second test of stewardship is uh, Valuing uh, eternal things over temporal. Unrighteous mammon against eternal riches. By the way, true riches there in the proper context is Jesus Christ. If we have Jesus Christ in our lives, then we shall lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want thirdly verse 12 the true test of faithful stewardship comes in managing another man's possession if you have not been faithful in that which is another man who shall give you that which is your own. That's why by definition of steward is a manager. A manager of somebody else's possessions. Everything belongs to God. He is the owner of everything. God is also the source of everything we may ever want. That's why in this church, my conviction is we can possess things we want, not because we can afford to buy them. Listen to this. Not because we have the money to buy for it, but God can entrust whatever we want by virtue of stewardship.
for one year. A brand new car with an expired comprehensive insurance. It's a no-no. It's a no-no. Even if you are the best driver in the world, you cannot avoid accident. But the Lord knows my heart. If we have not been affected by this global pandemic, personally and uh, collectively as a church, that insurance could have been paid off. Nevertheless, the Lord is taking care of me. The Lord is taking care of the vehicle because I'm showing God how I, I maintain faithful stewardship of that vehicle. That's the Lord's. If you have 1,000 pesos, how much is the Lord's? 1,000 pesos. Everything belongs to God. Now, if you say, if I have 1,000 pesos, then uh, 100 belongs to God, that is tithing. And by the way, some people are questioning uh, the practice of tithing in the New Testament. Tithing was before the giving of the law. We can never see a, an instruction of Paul overriding or overruling the practice of tithing, even Jesus Christ himself. But we can see the purpose of why Abraham gave his tithes to God. Look at uh, uh, Ag uh, Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Verse 17. This was when Abraham came uh, victorious uh, from the battle. Verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of uh, Shedaulamur. And of the kings that were with him at the valley of uh, Shava, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high god this is the first uh, mention of Melchizedek he was a king a king of Salem it typifies uh, the Lord Jesus Christ Melchizedek typifies the Lord Jesus Christ he was the priest of the most high god look at verse uh, 19 and he blessed Abraham. Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. How did he introduce, how did Melchizedek introduce God to uh, uh, Abraham? God, the possessor of what? Heaven and earth. Underline that on your Bible, verse 19. God is the possessor of heaven and earth. He is the possessor of everything by virtue of creation, by virtue of his sovereignty. And verse 20, And blessed be the Most High God, that is Melchizedek telling Abram, blessed be the Most High God who which delivered thine enemies into thine hand. The teaching of Melchizedek is, it wasn't your might, it wasn't your mighty men that delivered your enemies into your hand, but it was God. And because he learned two things, God is the owner of everything, and that God is a uh, uh, the powerful God who executed what? His good pleasure to whom he favors. 
Verse 20 says, And Abraham gave Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. And Abraham gave Melchizedek tithes of all. If it is not tithes of everything, it is not tithe at all. If it is not tithes of all, it is not tithe at all. Naisip nyo ba yan? And by the way, mga kapatid, the emphasis in the New Testament is generous giving, cheerful giving. How can we apply generous giving when we don't even could determine the minimum we ought to give God? Are you with me? Amen. To me, cheerful giving or generous giving is above the minimum. It's above 10%. If you give only 10%, that's tithes, that's the minimum you can give to God. It's only your expression. You need to, to, to be reminded that what's the reason we give our tithes? It's because we recognize that everything belongs to God. What you have comes from the Lord. Lord, here's my tithes. Because I recognize that you bless me for a reason and everything belongs to you. Verse 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto whom? The Lord. And how, he, how Abraham described uh, the Lord? the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. It was taught to him by Melchizedek. And he lived by it. He was made an offer by the king of Sodom to take off all the spoils he brought from victory. But Abraham, uh, Abraham denied it. Why? Because, verse 23, I will not take from a thread even to a shoe lache that I will not take anything that is thine that is of a king of Sodom lest thou should say I have made Abraham rich I told you earlier we are tested according to what we have we are tested according to our faith we are tested according to our conviction personally I am being tested by what I have taught you. Financial integrity. Financial stewardship. Financial stability by definition. What is financial stability according to my definition? It's not having much money all the time. But financial stability is whenever there is a need, the Lord provides. I requested you to pray for my needs. Not because I'm desperate, not because I'm anxious, because that we have been commanded to by God to come to Him for every need. I want to challenge you to see how the Lord will bless your pastor. According to what I have been teaching you. I am not teaching you man-made doctrine. I have been teaching you what the Bible is telling us. Nothing more, nothing less. Let's not make difficult giving as it is. Because if we will add man-made rule... To what the Lord has instructed, that is overruling His sovereignty, His design. The 
the first and the last time I taught this church first fruits giving, we had more than 300,000 pesos as a mission. First year as a mission. 300,000 plus. The first and the last I thought about first fruits giving. But how can I teach something which is not so clear in the New Testament? What's so evident in the New Testament is faithful stewardship. You can expound Luke chapter 16 verses 1 to 13. That's why when uh, the law was given, God retained the 10%. Now, who influenced who? Did Abraham influence God to make it 10 and put it in the law? No, God respects the motives of men. That's why in giving, it is important to maintain proper motives. What motivated Abraham to give the te uh, te tithes of all? Because he wants to manifest and he wants to declare that God is what? The sovereign God who owns everything. That's the reason why we need to give our tithe. God respects motives. He respected the motive of Abraham. That's why he uh, incorporated uh, ten percent into the law. Now, if we have that uh, uh, same uh, motivation and purpose, why we give our tithes? The Lord will honor our tithing. Don't accuse me that I am mandating you to give your tithes. No, I am uh, encouraging you to be faithful stewards of everything that the Lord entrusted you. If you have ten thousand pesos, how much is the Lord's? 10,000 pesos. If God will require us to give everything, He has the, all the reason. But the Lord does not require us to give everything. He just wants us not to take ownership of what He owns. He owns everything in our in, uh, he has uh, given us time, talent, treasures. Even our life is of the Lord. God is not requiring us to give all. But the Lord is requiring us not to take ownership of what belongs to Him. That's why if you have already given your 10%, you need to have the wisdom and ask God, Lord, how am I going to be a faithful steward of the 90% that belongs to you, that you have entrusted to me? When was the last time you asked the Lord, Lord, how would you like me to use this, this remaining money? Yes, it's yours because you are the steward, but you have to use it according to God wants you to use it. Your time, your talent, your treasures. That's faithful stewardship. You can never give cheerfully and generously unless you have given the minimum, and that is 10%. If the Lord wants you to give 11% of your total income, by all means, be faithful in giving 11%. If the Lord wants you to give 12% of your total income, by all means, be faithful in giving 12%. I have been giving since uh, de December of 2019. 40%. Because I'm paying my car. 40%. Since 2019, December. But prior to that, I used to give 100% back. I have no other liabilities until I bought that car in March of 2019. Brethren, 
I can teach you this without blinking an eye because as a young believer, I started with 20. Tithes, 5% love offering, 5% faith promise or mission offering. That was in 1984. And throughout the years, the Lord built up my faith. Giving, you can no longer scare me of giving. I have proven God all my Christian life of how faithful God is. In this church, we have seen the faithfulness of God in providing. Amen? We are fully independent. The truest sense of the word. We have not been receiving any single centavo from outside sources to finance our ministries. No. The Lord bless us through our, I hope, faithful stewardship. If everybody could be faithful in our uh, offerings, I do believe even in this pandemic we can be used by God as channels of blessings to others. We have been a channel of blessing to our community. Until now, we're supplying uh, uh, flood victims with what? Purified water. Our funding from uh, uh, our partners already ceased. But we're continuing on with the project. We're looking for some uh, other things that we could minister to our community. The clean-up operation. Help them uh, repair their uh, uh, homes with what? Light materials. We're not shying off from the financial obligations because we know that if we will do our part, God will do His. Brethren, let's live out our belief. Let's live out our conviction. That's how the Lord would want to bless us. Luke chapter 16, verse 13, the last verse. Luke chapter 16, the last verse. The Bible says, verse 13, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. Underline this on your Bible. You cannot Serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. To my friend, uh, Dr. Ferdi Marasigan and uh, Dr. Edwin Limbaga, cheers. To Dr. Marlin Lance. Cheers to our upcoming project. No servant can serve two masters. For he either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. The Bible says it's impossible. It's impossible to serve both God and money or material possession at the same time. You need to, to choose one. You cannot serve both. It's either you make money your servant or you be money's servant. Money is like a copy press cup. 
It's just an instrument. Money ought not to be served. Money ought not to be worked for. But here's the bottom line. You make money work for you. That's the principle in Luke chapter 16. Hello? The unjust steward use money to his benefit. You don't work for money. And I like what Dr. Edwin Limbaga told his people, his brethren last Sunday. You don't work for money. You solve global problem to attract money. Business is solving problem. That's why there's a forecast that the economic plunge, the global economic plunge can still go about a year or two from now. Can you believe it? Our president told us, economic-wise, that our people, our working people, are losing 2 billion pesos every day because of unemployment. Two billion a day. Meaning, there's a lot of people who are what? Into economic uh, uh, plunge. And it could extend for a year or two from now. Is that... Uh, Will that be a cause of alarm for God's people? No. Because if we will suffer like the world suffers, then God is a liar. If we will suffer like the world suffers, first world countries are suffering. America is shutting down. European countries are shutting down their economies. And if churches will shut down because of pandemic, then God is a liar. Do you believe that? We will never suffer like the world will suffer. Because there are ample commands in the Bible how the Lord will uh, supply our, our needs. Basically, John chapter 4 verse 34. Look at your Bible. John chapter 4 verse 34. Jesus left his kingdom, everything. And lived on earth. He has nothing. Even a pillow were to lay his head upon. He has no bank accounts. He has nothing. His disciples, he instructed his disciples not to carry an extra purse or an extra clothing in their journey. However, this is the formula of how God the Father sustained Jesus Christ and his disciples. John chapter 4 verse 34. My meat, talking about provision. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to what? Finish his work. Let's just be mindful of what the Lord wants us to do. Like what I have preached here last Sunday. Let's not forget our reason why we exist as a church. Israel have forgotten their reason for existence. 
That's why they suffered too many uh, 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 painful experiences. They turned their backs upon God. They disobeyed. Let's continue obeying God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek ye first. What? The kingdom of God. And His? And all these things. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's why the, the most important employment for a believer, if we want to secure our livelihood, listen to this, is the ministry of God. I don't know if you would, how would you take that, but the most secure and the most important employment a child of God must have is the work of the ministry. Churches will not go bankrupt if the leaders and the followers will do as the Lord commanded us to do. We're blessed to be a what? It's not about individual survival. It's about being a channel of blessing to the world. God did not change His purpose of Israel, of the church. We are still blessed to be a what? If we will stop blessing others, then the cycle will, will stop from us. God wants to go with the cycle. Too many examples how the Lord provided. The Lord provided the preservation of the entire nation in the entire book of Esther. I preach to you the entire book of Ruth, emphasizing how God can provide for His people. There is not a command given to us by God that he doesn't have a reason, a purpose, and that he is not willing to fulfill his promise. Look at Leviticus chapter 19. Here is one of the classic examples. Leviticus 19, verse 23 to 25. Verse 23. And when you shall come into the land, that's promised land, that's Canaan. And you shall have planted all manners of trees for food. Then you shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you. It shall not be eaten of. Yan mo sabi ng Panginoon, the Lord said to His people, when you come to the promised land and you will plant good fruits, three years, you will not eat of the fruit. Three years. Look at verse 24. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord with all. Three years, you will not eat the fruit of the trees. On the fourth year, that's first fruits. That's holy unto the Lord. That's holy unto the Lord. Look at verse 25. And in the fifth year, shall you eat the fruit thereof that it may yield unto you what? The increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. Kanya nga mga kapatid, pag first fruits, Old Testament talaga yan. Hindi pwedeng i-apply sa New Testament yan. Bakit? Kasi verse 23, agriculturists, farmers will tell you, 
pagka kayo nagtanim ng mga fruit bearing trees, talagang dapat pruning yan first trees, first three years. Yung mga bloso pinuputol yan. Bakit? Para mag-yield ng mas marami. Tanungin mo yung mga kamag-anak mo sa Dabao. Yung mga bagong puno, three years, hindi yan hinaharvestan. Pinupruning yan eh. This is the reason. Alam ng Panginoon yan. He designed everything. Sapagka tinuturuan sila ng Panginoon ng dependence o on the fourth year, yung bunga, first fruit. Eh, puro farmer sila eh. But in the fifth year, sabi ng Bible, you shall begin to eat the fruit thereof. Sundin niyo to, sabi ng Panginoon, para ano, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. In the foreknowledge of God, He designed fruit trees to be like that. And He made the law for us to benefit. Kaya niya pag sinabi ng Panginoon, huwag tayo magtataka. Bakit? Kasi kahit hindi natin maintindihan ang dahilan that we get blessed through giving, that's the law of God. You cannot do away with it. That widow woman gave her all, hello, did that widow woman went out of the temple went home and died? What's our deductive reasoning? She prospered like the uh, Sarapthan woman that was prospered by obe obeying what? The words of God through what? Through whom? Through Elijah. We have nothing. But this remaining flour and a, 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 a little oil and these two, two sticks to, to cook it, then we will eat it and die. What's the word of Elijah to, to the widow again? That uh, uh, the debtors, because now the priest, uh, her husband is dead. That he that uh, that the, the debtor will take away his children as the payment for their debts. Borrow, borrow what? Jars. Not few. Many. God has a reason, His way, to bless us. He instructed His disciples, Christ. Not to bring anything. Now comes the day they were about to pay taxes. The Lord instructed Peter to fish. And out of the fish yielded what? A penny for their need. Brethren, our God is a miracle working God. Amen. Let's honor Him. Let's trust Him. Let's believe up, uh, His faithful promises. Let's do our part so as for us to live in harmony in God's kingdom. Because in this life, God sets the terms and conditions of bountiful living. It's not in the getting, it's in the giving. Faithful stewardship. Every head be bowed and every eye be closed. Nothing can help us. Nothing can save us in this pandemic except the Lord himself. We are the church. And the church, by God's design, is still 
the Lord's uh, channel of blessings to the world, of His truth, and of His resources. Let's, let's not deny the Lord to work out His will for us. Let's trust Him. Let us be faithful in everything that the Lord entrusted us, whether it be little or whether it be much. That's the test, the first test of stewardship. We need to make use of money and material things to our advantage, not only to secure our future, but to secure our eternal habitation. Make friends of the unrighteous mammon. Make use of the money. Don't allow money to be your master. Everything belongs to the Lord. And we need to be faithful managers of His possession. Our life, our time, our talents, our treasure. We cannot serve God and man. We need to let, not to let go, but in letting go, we receive. And it's always giving up the lesser to gain the greater. We let go, we give of the material possessions that the Lord entrusted us only to gain eternal Habitation, eternal things that the Lord reserved for us in heaven. Let's not be fearful. Let's be trusting. Let's not be fearful. Let's be faithful. God is faithful. Trust Him. Obey Him. For there's no other way. If you want your future, your families, and our church to fulfill its God-given purpose. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your word. Thank you very much, Lord, for uh, we have no reason to fear. We have no reason to be anxious. For we know your reason why you have appointed us to be in this global pandemic. Lord, we welcome your blessing. And by blessing us, we want to be faithful. Help us to be faithful, Lord, so we could be channels of your blessings to people so that we could bring people to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us, O Lord. Take away our fears. Take away our doubts. Sustain our faith. Bless us, O Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.